All right, everybody, today on the bench, I've got a Hot Rod Deluxe from Buddies. And uh, he complains of it being kind of noisy, not so awesome, just sounding dull and dead. And it's only a 19, let's see, what was it? I think it's about a, no, 2009 model, I guess. So this thing's about, not quite 10 years old. Um, but I can already see some of the telltale signs right here. Uh, I haven't drained the cap, so I'm only gonna stick in here with the chopstick. This is the uh, reverb circuit uh, and, <laughs> This brown stuff here means that these basically are running too hot, too close to this board and creating a lot of heat. So I've bought replacement caps for, or resistors for those. I'll stand them up away from the board and then just fill in some silicone under them to protect them. These are pretty common fixes on these guys. Another one, I can already see some goop coming down at the bottom of this capacitor and these Illinois capacitors are garbage. So I'm gonna literally replace every single cap with a couple of minor exceptions. There was a couple of like 0.1 microfarad caps at a certain spot that I can't remember, like in part of the, like an op amp circuit or something, I don't remember, that are not massively main part of the signal flow. So I'm not worried, but I'm gonna be getting these, some of these like, for example, are part of the power supply filtering for the reverb circuit and other kinds of stuff. Uh, there's one down here that is the uh, bias, one of the bias capacitors. I think some of these are bias capacitors as well, or these two. So I'm gonna be replacing in mass most of these, especially because they're IC, but uh, you know, they're just, fairly problematic and make a lot of noise. So I'm gonna be um, taking everything out, dropping it, but I also just played it for a minute to get a sense of it and it def definitely has a lot of noise, sounds crummy. I'm thinking this cap is not doing well. So uh, because of the fact I can see the heat's gotten to it and it's dribbling out goop. Um, so I will hopefully be able to protect these from heat a little bit better now. Um, and I'll just recap it all. So uh, I'll come back after the cut with this thing hopefully out and let you look at what I've gotten done, pulled out, and then I'll be ready to recap it. So there you have it. Okay. so. Uh, as you can see here, I had to do a pretty heavy bodge wiring because as usual with these fenders, they roasted the traces, just removing the resistors that were bad and putting the new ones in, just traces came right off. They were like paper thin. So I had to basically, since I was replacing the capacitors anyway, I was able to connect, you know, put the leads through, wrap the wire around them and then solder them together. And then I put some silicone there just so they can't vibrate and move, hopefully anyway. Uh, but that's the typical kind of uh, one of the ways. I'm not as good as some of these guys that know how to actually repair damaged solder pads, but I have been able to um, get that all together. I'd actually forgot to film it and I started putting it back together again to test everything out and found out that the switching wouldn't work. Everything else was working, but channel switching wouldn't work. And that was because one of these solder connections, um, I had gotten the connection in from my lead that came through from the connection. Uh, on this jumper, but it was broken between there and a trace that probably isn't gonna be very visible here, but that came over to about right here. So I, I did notice that the trace was kind of visible. So I just scratched away a little bit more of that trace so I could see it. And then I made the solder connection between that trace and then the connections there, and it seems to be working. So uh, I'll put it together. If that doesn't work, I'm after like remove the silicone I put on there and do another jumper between here and there, but we'll get to that point in a minute. But um, yeah, so I'm just kind of letting this cure a little bit. And then I, as you can tell from here, the, the cap job is all done. I've got some silicone that I've put in in places here to help keep them from moving. I did not replace some of these, like I think I mentioned before, I did not replace some of these that are more related to the solid state components because they don't run under heavy load or heavy current and get heavy heat. Uh, and one thing I did find out was this capacitor that I replaced that was near these, oh, I didn't, I need to put silicone under those guys. Um, this guy was dead, like, and there was a decent amount of noise and it was because yet again, the crappy components they use, see if I can find that one and show you, it was, it was dripping goo. Yeah, here it is. So if you look here, I don't know if that'll be very visible, but I'll get it into focus if I can. You can see there's all kinds of black goo dripping out of it. So this one was dead anyway. So yeah, I'm gonna put a little bit more silicone. Now that I noticed I didn't put it, I need to put some silicone to support these guys, but you can see I've got them up off the board in a way so their heat can't cook the board as easily. Uh, and then I'm gonna put silicone in the area around it so that it can, um, so that it can be protected from the heat as well. So uh, basically I'll put a little bit of silicone in between here as well to protect this capacitor from the heat of those guys as well. So that's what I'll be doing next. And after that, I should be reassembling it and I'll show it to you finished. All right, I test fired her up, powered on. She worked great. Uh, everything's looking perfect. So at this point, really, let me try and zoom out a little bit. a couple of annoying things that I had run in, that I ran into. Well, obviously the traces were kind of toasted. Uh, I also, um, the potentiometer I bought is the perfectly right kind, but it was taller and it's a D shaft. I believe I should still be able to screw the 
that on, but I had to take a hacksaw and chop off the top end of that, which was kind of annoying, but to make it the height of the other one, so it'll be easier to put that the chicken head knob back on. Uh, and I also um, got the wrong kind of these capacitors. So what I've done, they're supposed to be um, radial and they got axial. So I put a, a longer connection because it wouldn't reach, soldered it, and then covered that with shrink wrap, and then pushed it through the leads and both of those, and that's working just fine. I put a little bit of uh, goop on them to keep them from vibrating as well. Uh, these guys, I've put some goop on them to keep them working well. Same here or to keep them from vibrating. Um, so ultimately everything looks like it's in good shape now. I just played it, it sounds good. I'm not gonna jam it for you because you guys have heard of Hot Rod Deluxe before. Um, but at any rate, I think we're good to go. So I'm gonna be closing it up and calling that good. I'm just gonna check the bias, make sure that it looks like the range that they wanted it at and I think we'll be good. So another amp fixed. Uh, hopefully the customer will be happy. He did mention to me as well, he's got some uh, Mallard preamp tubes and he said he wasn't very fond of them, but I honestly think when I played it before, it just sounded dead and lifeless. That one cap being out might have been enough, but even the other caps were those older, crappier, uh, you know, Illinois type. So they're replaced now with some good ones, uh, and it just sounds a little bit livelier and cleaner and happier to me anyway. So I'll give him a chance to play it. If not, I've got some tubes here. Uh, we'll try and swap a few out and see if those work out for him as well. But uh, all in all, we're in good shape. Uh, thanks, everybody. Cheers. Have a good one.